Welcome to February 13th, the first work day of the week that we all call a Sunday. Actually, it's a shopping day for the wife and I. Uh, we went out and did our shopping. We come back this afternoon. It's 1.09 p.m. here in Arizona. But we made it back and beautiful. Well, brethren, let's uh, get right into the Lord's Care Ministry. A year to keep your eyes on heaven, day 44 of the year 2011. Our need for confession. Brethren, I suggest you write these verses down on a piece of paper, the chapter and verses down, so that you can go back and study our need for conf uh, confession at your own leisure. Pardon me for stumbling along. I've got two or three things I'm doing here at once. I only have a small, single brain. Well, brethren, you can use the pause button down here in the corner to start and stop this video study as we go along so that you'll be able to open your Bible and be able to read right along with us. Okay, let's get into our need for confession, and to do that, we'll go to James chapter 5 verses 13 through 16 and we'll start in verse 16 there pray for each other so that you may be healed a preacher once came to his friend and said our church has just experienced the greatest revival of repentance and brokenness the friend was excited for the preacher so how many members did you add to your congregation? None, said the preacher sadly. We lost 300. There's something inside of us that resists opening up our struggles. We are inherently uncomfortable with the idea of sharing our feelings with others. Sometimes pride gets in the way. And other times it's simply embarrassment. Pardon me. <coughs> Been doing that all day. And for some it may be the fear of vulnerability, of knowing that our exposure would be used against us. It is a sad dynamic, but a very real one. People who most need the support and acceptance of others often have no one to turn to in their time of need. Pardon me again. <coughs> Just had some penis and I think I got a hole in my throat too. The body of Christ should be the one place where sinners can go for help and understanding. Too often though, it is a place where we are least likely to find it. It is like the sinner standing outside the locked church door crying out for God. Why won't they let me in? God answered him. Do not feel bad. They will not let me in either. They say they're following God, but they won't do none of his commandments. Dietrich Bonhoeffer once wrote in of this dilemma. He who is alone with his sin is un utterly alone. Pious fellowship permits no one to be a sinner, so everyone must conceal his sins from himself and from their fellowship. We dare not be sinners, so we remain alone with our sin, living the lies and hypocrisy. Some years ago, I witnessed firsthand what can happen when a spirit of a broken one comes to a church. People had buried their sins beneath their, beneath their facade for years, finally opened up and confessed to each other, asking for prayer and support. Their openness quickly fueled the flames of repentance within others, and before long, the congregation was finding healing that it never dreamed impossible. Dreamed possible, pardon me. Decades of hurt and resentment rose to the surface, and the Spirit of God moved mightily among them. 
And it all started with the simple act of humility from one broken brother. Spiritual healing is critical to our Christian walk. And it begins with honest confession. In what way is healing and forgiveness contingent on confession? What happens when we confess our sins to each other? Psalms chapter 2 and verse 7 reads, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. My mother's prayer. James chapter 5 and verse 6. Essential prayer availeth much. And in Psalms chapter 2 and verse 6, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust, never in the tradition of men. Beware the tradition of men that make void the word of God. If you make Avoid the word of God, you will find yourself drowning in your lies, in your sins. Brethren, you don't want that to happen. If you want to find forgiveness in the Lord, then get down on your knees and repent. Repent of following the tradition of men. And if you repent to the Lord, he'll give you the thumbs up and grant you your wish if you truly want to change in your heart. Brethren, while you're on your knees, ask for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding that the good Lord has given you that is found in your own Bible. And with that, you find the beautiful things of this world and not the ugly things that can be found there. For following the tradition of men, you will find the broad path that leads to destruction. Brethren, with that, we're going to close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. And God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.